Everybody, welcome to System Crappers Live. I'm David Wilson, and today we're back with another live stream where we get together as a community and talk about whatever interesting topic I've concocted for us this uh, for this current week. And uh, today is no exception to that. We're going to talk about Wayland today, and we haven't really talked about Wayland much on the channel before, but I've recently started looking into it a little bit more just for my own mm, interest and in possible projects. So uh, we're going to take a look at what we can learn about it today. So uh, hello to Brian, Glenn, and Robert. Robert says, I thought there was no live stream this week. What a nice surprise. Yeah, it was last week we didn't have one, uh, but this week I managed to pull a rabbit out of a hat and try to get one together. As you will see, uh, not super prepared, but you know, this is typically the way we do it. We just try to figure things out as we go. So uh, we'll see what we can do today. Uh, so as far as updates are concerned, hello to Slalom Skater. Uh, one big announcement that was happening, or maybe last week or the week before last, can't remember exactly which week it was, but uh, Emacs 28.1 has finally been released, or at least the, the release build has been cut for that. So Emacs 28.1. I don't have uh, the news entry handy. However, sorry, the, the actual uh, mailing list post. Oh, it's right here. April 4th. So Eli uh, posted an email to the Emacs Devel list saying the Emacs 28.1 has been released, which basically means that uh, the stable version of Emacs 28 is now available, but various Linux distributions, et cetera, may not have that version just yet, but you can build it from source code. And if you're on Windows, I believe you can download the Windows binary. Probably it's also uh, in the Homebrew and other similar package repositories for Mac OS. So if you're a Linux user, you may have to compile it, but um, otherwise you may be able to get it uh, on, like say if you use Arch Linux or Arc, whatever you call it, uh, you probably have access to it right now. I think in GNU Geeks, you probably also do, but this machine is not up to date, so I don't actually have access to the latest packages. Um, let's see. Yen says, perfect timing, just as I was looking for something to watch while preparing dinner. Well, I'm glad I could facilitate your dinner preparations. Uh, Brian says, new to the channel, open source user for 23 years, getting back into Emacs, learning about Wayland. Awesome. That's great. Salam Skater says, uh, nice topic. Most of my machines have NVIDIA cars, and I think Wayland just became possible. Okay. I didn't know that, but that makes sense. Uh, Milner says, uh, morning, Dave. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, Fikri says, hello. Aurora says, hello. Hello to both of you. Nice to see you. Um, also, I will say that I won't have a stream next week because it's a another holiday in Greece and I'm going to be spending time with family uh, around this time of year is Easter in Greece and there's a lot of sort of holidays leading up to next weekend which is sort of like the actual Easter weekend so we're going to be uh, eating a lot of delicious food as usual uh, Artem says hello from Ukraine hello hope everything's going well for you there um so uh what else did I want to say Oh uh, yeah, finally managed to potentially secure a place to live here in Greece. So probably within the next two months, I'll actually be in an office, my own home office, and have the ability to stream without this stupid backdrop that keeps flapping behind me. So I'll have an actual real streaming setup. And that also means it will probably be easier for me to be making videos regularly again, which is something I haven't been doing for a while, obviously. Uh, I apologize for that. It's been really busy and crazy, and I've also been you know, as you may have noticed, sidetracked with another project recently. Uh, but I do want to get back into making System Crafters videos. Um, obviously, making stuff about Emacs uh, will be a part of that, but I want to start branching out a little bit more as well. I'm thinking about the possibility of uh, doing a series about making your own window manager with Wayland. So that's part of, part of the reason why we're looking into Wayland today is to sort of learn a little bit more about it and how one might actually approach writing a window manager or just if there's anything different about the window managers that currently exist for Wayland. So um, 
that's certainly a possibility. There's probably other topics that we need to get into because, you know, system crafting is about more than just using Emacs. I mean, Emacs can do a lot, but maybe there's other aspects to um, configuring your system or at least understanding your system that we need to cover. And uh, there's a lot that we could do there. So I'm hoping that we can sort of branch, branch out into some of those topics. If there's things in particular that you would be interested to see in the future that me cover sort of at the same level of depth as we've been doing with uh, Emacs so far, uh, let me know in the chat let me know in the comments send me an email find me on irc or discord which i've been hopelessly uh, absent from lately but i'm very interested in covering some other topics maybe even systems programming at some point i've been having a lot of fun writing c lately so there's a lot of things that i would be interested to make videos on uh in addition to videos on emacs so we'll, we'll see how that goes uh, once i finally have a place and we uh, have a more stable situation from which i can make content all right so today uh, we are going to be experimenting with Wayland compositors. Uh, I will admit I have not actually tried to run any of these before now. Um, and my understanding is you should be able to run them from within an XORG session as we're in at the moment. So since I haven't done it yet, this could be a sort of terminal. There could be terminal problems or what I mean by that is that the stream could die. Uh, if I do something wrong. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm going to try to run four different Wayland compositors that I have access to on GNU Geeks. That would be Sway, DWL, Cage Break, and Qtile, if we have time to get through all those anyway. Um, I haven't used any of these. I've used, uh, I've used i3 before, which Sway is sort of based on, but the rest of these I don't have any experience with. And I know that uh, Qtile is something that has been mentioned a lot on DistroTube. So maybe some people here who also see DistroTube have some experience with it, but I've never used it before. So we're going to take a look at it a little bit later. Um, so yeah, we're going to try and run these inside of an X session and see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Uh, but yeah, if it does, it's just part of the fun. Well, I'll try to reconnect and then we'll continue on maybe trying the next window manager or maybe just doing something else. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yes, Aurora says, get ready for the video to be five parts. I hope not but maybe we'll see. Um, so before we get into that, let's actually look at um, a little bit of information about Wayland architecture because, you know, it's easy to hear that Wayland's the, the, the new thing, which really is not that new, in the um, Linux desktop environment space, uh, but we don't really know what it is, or maybe some of you know what it is, but you know, I think many people have not, who have not tried it yet, or have heard things like, oh, it's not stable, or maybe you can't use certain types of apps that require screen sharing, et cetera, et cetera. All, a lot of those things have been handled by this point, but it has been you know, a many year development process to get to the point where Wayland is stable enough to be used uh, primarily. So the question you kind of want to answer for yourself is, is Wayland something that I should consider? Because if it's more modern, um, is it going to be better for me as a user of a Linux desktop environment? Uh, and also, I guess the question, it also begs the question, if you are the type of person who likes using, you know, tiling window managers, which all these basically are, um, is it worth it? We will find out, I guess. Now, there's one window manager that I did want to try that isn't available in Geeks, and I didn't have time to try to compile it myself, which is Wayfire, which is not necessarily a tiling window manager, but it's more like a scriptical scriptable scriptable window management framework for Wayland and it's kind of interesting because it has some of those fancy 3D visuals or you know effects that you might have seen you know 10 15 years ago with Compiz and other uh, compositors like that for Xorg but um, yeah we're not going to get to see that one today unfortunately and all these might seem a little underwhelming by comparison but really it's the architecture and what possibilities it brings to the table that are more interesting I think so uh, let's take a look at the Wayland architecture. Let me grab a little sip of coffee here first. Sebastian says, look forward for the C programming session with Emacs as the main editor. Yes, indeed. I use Emacs for all of my C programming, so we would do that for sure. OK, so this page is pretty helpful. This actually is from the main Wayland website. Uh, it's Talking about the Wayland architecture, it says a good way to understand the Wayland architecture and how it is different from X is to follow an event from the input device to the point where the change it affects appears on screen. Now, I'm not going to go through this step by step. I'm just sort of going to kind of gloss over it a little bit. The, the main difference is that in uh, an X server, the, uh, the server is actually the running session for your desktop environment, I think. It's not, it's not what you... It's not the windows you're looking at necessarily, but it is the thing that's facilitating the rendering. 
and all the X clients are actually windows in that environment. And the window manager itself actually is a client as well. So there's a server that facilitates events between the user and the, the windowing system and everything else is going on inside of the graphical environment. And then you have all these clients that are listening for events and also rendering things that are to be displayed on screen. Uh, you may also have a compositor off to the side that helps with the uh, process of like overlaying things between windows. Like if you wanna have transparent uh, terminals that can show the actual contents of a window behind, you need something like a compositor to take care of that. You also need it for hardware accelerated rendering and for uh, rendering like scrolling without screen tearing. So you may have noticed that if you don't use a program like Compton or PyCom uh, on your desktop environment, when you scroll in your browser, you'll see a lot of screen tearing. Well, a compositor helps with that because it sort of smooths out the whole rendering process. Um, so this has been sort of the overall architecture for graphical environments in Linux for many, many, many years. Uh, but then Wayland came along, let's see, uh, Wayland Wikipedia. I don't know exactly when it started, but it's been a while actually uh, since it had been invented. Wayland is a protocol, so it's not really a program per se. Uh, it was created or the initial release of the protocol was in September of 2008. So it's been a long time since this thing's been in development. Uh, and it really is like a core protocol and I think a series of extension protocols that facilitate a modern desktop environment experience. And it has kind of a key difference in this, uh, what you see here in this architecture, where there is an X server and a bunch of clients that are rendering and it's you know, passing events back and forth and maybe there's a, like a compositor off to the side. The difference with Wayland is that the compositor is actually the main thing. It's the compositor itself is the server and the clients are still the windows that are being shown. But uh, the compositor has a more direct role in the whole sort of desktop environment experience. Not really desktop environment, that's not the right word for this, but it's sort of like the graphical environment experience. So it facilitates the passing of events to Windows and, and responding to their events that come back. Also, it, it handles you know facilitating them rendering into a buffer in memory so that it can be displayed on the screen but it is able to do all these things together in a more coherent way so that it's not so decoupled from each other meaning that you're going to have a overall in theory a smoother uh graphical environment experience than you would have with xorg because xorg is actually meant to be like a network protocol and you could you know maybe you've even used it like this before you could actually run x applications from a remote machine and have it show up on your local system so it does have some pretty interesting um applications but wayland is sort of you know developed from my understanding uh to just make the local desktop experience much much better and also facilitate really high quality high performance uh hardware accelerated render rendering of windows and everything else that you might want to do with that hey gavin nice to see you so uh, it's a different design overall. It's a, it's a simplified design. And it's also, um, I guess you could call it a little bit more modern in how the protocol and the extensions are also brought into the picture. I don't know a whole lot about that yet, but what I understand from what I've read so far is that you know, it should be easy to invent new standards for things like screen capture or for any other types of things you would want to do in a desktop environment. Um, now, the thing is, since Wayland is a protocol and since a compositor is basically the whole server, it has to implement all the functionality, um, it's harder for window managers, window managers, which are basically compositors in this case, to be written. We'll talk about the implications of that in a second, but it's worth noting that if you are interested in writing a window manager for Linux, um, doing it for xorg has, has traditionally been easier because you're just writing an, another x client that just you know passes events between other clients in the server uh the x server xorg server is its own standalone process it's written by the maintainers of xorg and it takes care of a lot of those sort of core functionalities uh in wayland you do it yourself you if you are the window manager author it's your <clears throat> excuse me your responsibility to speak to the wayland protocol and to facilitate this whole process however um there is a project called wl roots which is sort of the the core library used by i would say almost all implementations of a wayland compositor or window manager uh this is actually not the right site for it these days um now, uh, the author, the original creator of this library is Drew DeVault, who is also the creator of Source Hut and has done plenty of other open source projects online. So you're probably familiar with uh, him and his work. But I think this project is mainly maintained by the, t the sort of maintainer team now. 
Um, this is sort of the core library that many people are using for implementing window managers. And it does have some examples that make it seem like, you know, it's not easy, but it is much easier than it would be if you had to write all this stuff yourself. So it, how does it describe itself? It says that it is the, well, this says a modular Wayland compositor library, but there's another way to describe it. Yeah. Where was it? Basically, it says all the stuff that you would have to write yourself. So they're providing a bunch of pieces that you could put together to make your own Wayland compositor, which I think is pretty useful as someone who is interested in writing a Wayland compositor. So uh, if you're interested in the background of writing a Wayland based window manager and compositor, this is the first place you should look in all the documentation and blog posts around this. And for my own sort of, you know, hacking projects, which, you know, none of it started yet. I'm just sort of thinking right now. Uh, I am planning to use this as well just to, to you know, jumpstart the whole effort. I think it's a good basis to build on. So that's sort of the overall very, 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 very high level view of what Wayland is compared to Xorg. Wayland is sort of like everything in one program and a very tightly uh, integrated experience as opposed to Xorg, which is a separate server program that's not written by you and you're sort of just plugging into it and then this whole this whole ecosystem has to play together nicely and uh, it's also kind of antiquated in design compared to uh, the more modern stuff now when i say antiquated i mean more in terms of it was written with different use cases and um, system types in mind but obviously it's not antiquated from the perspective that it's old and creaky i mean it is, i guess you could say it's old and creaky but it's still in use. It's been in use forever as far as, you know, Linux and, you know, operating Unix based operating systems previous to that. I think even X is is predates Linux. So uh, it, it's been successful as far as what it what it brings to the table. However, Wayland is trying to sort of, you know, put things into the modern era and make it easy for people to have a really smooth experience. Let's see if there's anything else interesting here. And also anybody in the chat who, who hears me say something wrong, please feel free to correct me because I'm still learning this stuff, too. Uh, let me actually check the chat really quickly. So Brian says, I rely heavily on exporting single app windows in X. I hope Wayland continues this, continues this functionality without the bloat. I'm not certain whether that's going to be possible. Um, it might be. I mean, it's a protocol after all. You could, you know, uh, put it over the network, but I don't exactly know. Well, if you have a Wayland compositor running um, on a host system, and then you somehow can pipe the protocol over a network. In theory, you could do the same thing, but I don't exactly know if Wayland is made with that in mind like X was. Uh, Ting says, I've tried Wayland on NixOS. Uh, let's see. Uh, last week with GNOME, my Emacs is flashing and I have to modify my startup script of Alacrity and other Electron apps. Yeah, things are different. Um, if, you're, if you wanna use Wayland, I think the best approach right now is to use the PGTK build of Emacs because it is um, sort of refactored to make it work better in Wayland because you're sort of using raw GTK3 code instead of the sort of mishmash of uh, GTK rendering plus sort of like the old terminal style refresh model that the uh, uh, current Emacs release uses. So like. Let's see, Emacs, uh, PGTK. I believe this is actually a branch in the real, yeah, the real uh, Emacs repo. So this says that it was merged. Does it, is it really merged? And that's from December. Uh, can I go to the root of this, this thread? Okay, so it may just be a compiler flag, just like the native compilation uh, functionality is at this point. So if you wanted to, you could probably build. What if this is in Emacs 29 or 28? I heard it was 29, but maybe it is 28. Let's see. Uh, Emacs git repo. Let's just take a look really quick. It should be in the news file, I think. But um, either way, that's the point, is if you want to use Emacs in Wayland, this is probably the better approach. I've heard the performance is much better with it. And if you use it in Wayland, I think it might be a smoother Emacs experience altogether, especially coupled with uh, native compilation. So that would be pretty cool. I haven't tried it yet, though. So uh, PGTK. Okay, so like 
yeah, they definitely have it. Clean up PGT, PGTK code. Uh, some more news mentioned that PGTK needs GTK greater than 3.20. Okay, so there is a with PGTK flag in the um, master branch of Emacs. Yep. So if you want to try that out, definitely clone the latest Emacs, then use that with PGTK flag when you compile it or when you run the configure, I think. And then you should be able to run that version or that build of Emacs. So um, I haven't tried that one out yet, like I mentioned, but it, it's worth trying, especially if I start using uh, Wayland uh, more frequently. So other questions we got here. Uh, Cocoon says, is Wayland stable enough today? Last time I checked, it was about a year ago. I don't know. I mean, it, it really depends on what stable means to you and also which compositor you're using because Wayland is not a program. Wayland is a protocol and then it depends on which compositor that you use. And since a lot of the stuff is being based on being built on on uh, WL roots, if they all use a more recent version of WL roots and the products are sort of active, I would imagine that bugs will generally get uh, fleshed out or flushed out. But that really depends on whether um, the compositor implementation or the window manager implementation implements things correctly. So it, there's so many factors involved here that it's not just, you know, is Wayland stable? It's like, is a specific Wayland compositor stable? That's the better way to look at it. Uh, the other aspect of it is whether applications interact correctly with Wayland. So like OBS, which I use for streaming and recording, um, you know, over time, support has been added for recording with Wayland because in the past it was harder to do screen capture the right way. Uh, but that situation is improved. Uh, stability is improved especially if you use something like a Pipewire. I think that Pipewire plus Wayland with more modern graphical Linux applications should be stable, but it really just depends on what programs you're using and what compositor you're using, I think. Uh, Steven says, X was around in the 80s, Linux was early 90s. Yes, that definitely sounds right to me. Uh, Gavin says, stable enough for some people, but not for everyone. That's also true. Hey, Marduk. Ed says, I've been using Wayland GNOME on Fedora for five years. That's cool. And it must have improved a lot since then. And I think that's sort of the default now, right? Like on Fedora, the latest uh, version, I think they're using, uh, they have been using Wayland as the default. Uh, Gavin says, I wonder if Mac and Windows devs say the same about their own display manager sometimes, whether they're old and crusty. I mean, at least Windows, everything's been based on like the old Win32 APIs at the very core forever. Now, all that stuff gets updated over time, but you know, it's, it's kind of funny how everything sort of boils back down to Win32 API. On uh, Mac, I'm not so sure. I think that you know, they gradually try to refresh things and introduce new um, APIs for windowing and whatnot, but I, I'm not a Mac developer, so I'm not really up on that. Uh, Marduk says, interesting, last time I checked Emacs worked fine in Gnome Wayland, and that was last year. Yeah, I mean, it, it may just be, you know, particular configurations that, that cause this. Brian says, I run jailed browsers on dedicated machines and export the window, uh, also Electron apps. That's a good idea, actually. I do not see myself ever using a single, uh, this has been my X workflow since 2000. That's cool. Vitaly says, it was merged after 28.1 release. Yeah, cool. That That is what I remembered. Uh, let's see, whoops. Where are we? Ed says, I run uh, Emacs Lucid with no problems on Wayland. Interesting. I haven't used Emacs Lucid, but I, I can't really get over the, uh, the UI style on that. Let's see. Drishal says, speaking of Wayland, also give a try to River WM. Well, Sway, we're definitely trying. River, um, it's not available on Geeks, but people should check it out. I think it's written in Zig, which is pretty cool. Uh, River uses dynamic tiling like DWM. Sway is i3 almost. Yeah, Sway is basically an i3 clone from what I understand. Sam says, my experience is that it's quite stable on Fedora Gnome. Uh, the main problem is Zoom screen sharing doesn't work. Yeah, Zoom is one of the apps that has problems with Wayland, probably because they haven't done the necessary work to implement it correctly, which, you know, why would they care about... Uh, Linux users whenever I think Mac OS users are probably the largest part of their user base. Uh, Drishal says, speaking of OBS, there are plugins to record in OBS. You need Pipewire for that. Yep, I believe that's true. Um, Zira says, I'm on Sway. Uh, don't have any issues with Emacs 28 plus native comp. Everything runs fine now, but I used to have issues with Windows updating their size and crashes with MPV. Interesting. 
Rishal says, if you want can super candy uh, animations, try Wayfire. Yeah, I wish I could try it, but I don't have it. I have seen all the videos, um, and I wanted to try it, but I looked on Geeks, and it's not here. So I won't be able to try that one today, unfortunately. But that is definitely the probably the best example of what's possible with Wayland right now. I mean, obviously, a lot of that stuff was done in Compiz, even back whenever I was in college, like in 2000. When did I try comp is like 2005, 2006? Yeah. So long time ago, a lot of the same things like the 3D rotating cube with all your workspaces and, you know, zooming out on applications and stuff. But I feel like Wayland is more made for this. And um, well, let me just talk for a second about what I think, you know, what might be interesting about Wayland. Because the compositor is so tied into the core of what's happening with window management and just the general uh, graphical application experience, it's much more possible for a compositor to invent interesting interaction paradigms, you could say, uh, with windows from other applications. So something I've been thinking about is like, if I want to have my own kind of studio for developing games or making music or editing videos, it's sort of more hacker friendly, which is sort of what I'm doing on the Flux Harmonic channel. I'm sort of building up all these tools to make it possible to create a bunch of different types of stuff. Um, then it would be nice if I had an experience that was sort of like a digital audio workstation. And I don't know if you've ever like tried to use one of these applications before, but uh, something like Ableton Live has a very um, specific type of interface that is well tuned for what you're doing in that program. It's got certain panels that have a certain um, um, responsibility. You know, it's got different browser windows. You can move things around. Blender is also another good example of this. It has a very flexible interface. You know, what I'm thinking is like, you could make something like that with Wayland. You you could make your own compositor that basically makes like a full screen desktop environment that is effectively like Blender or Ableton Live or any of these other really flexible uh, interfaces. But it's not just for a specific set of tools, it's for anything. You could have any program in these things. You could dock them anywhere. You could just, you know, tile the, the interface however you want. Um, I think it's kind of interesting to think about the possibilities with that. And also for, you know, customizing your overall workflow in a way that you have a lot more control over everything. Obviously, we've been talking about that with Emacs a lot, but Emacs as a window manager has a lot of limitations that I've sort of been bumping up against more and more over time. So I feel like um, there is some room for a Wayland compositor that you can use Emacs as sort of like the primary editor and driver of things, but you also have this capability of having a really rich uh, tiling experience that is made for people who want to have very specific workflow. So anyway, that's sort of my thought process. And I think Wayland makes that kind of thing possible. So it, I, I am interested in experimenting to gradually come up with something like that. Gavin says, is that not possible in X? That should be possible. Some of the things I have in mind aren't as possible with X. Like for instance, um, if you are working on a, um, a a game or some other kind of media, you could have a split screen view where you have your main thing, like, like, like an editor, like a, a text editor. And then you could have, you know, a few tiles of something running, but instead of it just like making the window itself smaller and the application has to react to this window size, you could actually scale down that, uh, that program with the compositor to make it a smaller size so that the app doesn't have to do anything for that. You could have a windowed game and just like make it scale down. But then when you switch the focus to the game, the game could then expand back out again. So there's stuff that you could possibly do with Wayland that wouldn't be as easy to do in X, I think. I, you would need a, a special compositor, um, which maybe PyCom and other compositors for X can do that. But I feel like with Wayland, you can have a more integrated experience. And that's sort of what I'm looking for. Aria says, late to the stream as usual. Well, you know, better late than never. Uh, Drishal says, by the way, Nix supports all of these window managers. Yeah, but I don't use Nix, so it doesn't help me. Vitaly says, I screen share in Zoom and Sway using web version plus XDG portal WLR. That's interesting. Okay, that sounds like it actually would work. Okay, so let's stop talking here and try looking at some of these window managers. And like I said, I haven't tried them yet. I haven't tried to run them yet. I'm going to run them directly in X, which in theory should create a Wayland session, but it could crash. So let's just see what happens. Uh, first of all, let's go to the Sway WM website and um, see if it gives us any tips on how we can run this. 
I know that it makes it possible to, um, let's see, to run it inside of X. So let me just pull up VTerm here. And uh, man sway, sway, there we go, okay. So I think we don't have to do anything, we just run sway and it should just create a session. So what if I do that? Let's just see what happens, sway. Okay, I got a black screen here, can anybody see me still? I'm waiting to see on my readout if, if the screen is still visible. Like I've got a full black screen here and I can't see anything and I can't get out. So <laughs> this is already fun. Yeah, so you can see the stream. I can see the stream, but you can't actually see. Oh, okay. So I'm actually changing workspaces and uh, my screen is black. Let me actually check this out for a second. So. Let me think of how I want to approach this. I'm going to switch screens. And then um, go to VTerm. Yeah, I can't kill all right now, unfortunately. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, all right, cool. It's very interesting to try to do this uh, blind. Uh, P kill, sway. Not possible to run sway in X. I thought it was. Yeah, I can see my terminal too. Interesting. So I did it and it, uh, huh. Ah, great. So unable to create backend, failed to open any DRM device. Uh huh. All right, so my screen is black. I can see it on the YouTube readout, but I can't actually see anything on this screen. Hmm. Did I? Ah, great. That's okay, because this it's it's a one-time token anyway, so. Huh. Well, it didn't. We saw it in the... Doesn't have a wallpaper. So what is the, usually the key to get out of Sway? Let me look it up on the other computer here. So Sway default key bindings. Because it did something. Is it uh, mod shift E? I wonder if it's even gonna work. Yes, I would have tested them in the VM. Question is, if I do mod shift Q, is it going to kill everything? Ah, sway message exit. Do I have access to that? So it's funny, like I can select text on the screen. Okay. Sway message exit. Probably not going to happen. Didn't work. Unable to retrieve socket path. Very nice. So uh, this is what I get for experimenting without trying things first, right? I wonder if actually running uh, the stream ha has something uh, wrong with it. Yeah, I can see the output. <laughs> on uh on the youtube's feed right now so that's that's what's fun about this um let me see what can we do about this then reboot the system i don't want to break the stream i'm going to try to let this thing run as long as possible so what can we do i could try to run uh let's see ah Go away. Trying to, yeah, okay, there we go. So, uh, vert man. Nah, it's not the monitor. This is my laptop. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to open up QMU for a second. All right, I got a, other problems here. I 
I have to wait for, um, come on now. There we go. Vert manager. I have to wait for the things to show up on this screen on the side and it takes about 10 seconds. I can't even see anything. So this is really kind of pointless, I think. Hmm, let me think for a second. Is it worth busting the stream just to uh, be able to see my screen again? That's the question. Because unfortunately, as soon as I uh, disconnect from the stream, it uh, stops it and you have to make a new one, which I hate. Just enable auto stop, I could turn that off. Is anybody watching from Twitch? GK Sudo, can you kill Sway through proc ed? No. Uh, because Sway is actually not running. It just like totally borked my display. Control G. All right, so um, here's what I'm gonna do. I think this will work. So I've turned off auto stop on the stream. Ranji says, uh, many philosophers have pondered the worth of being able to see one screen. Yeah, well, it probably I would uh, live better if I wasn't looking at a screen all day. Stream to peer tube? I don't know. Control all F2. I, if, I, if I switch to a TTY, then it's going to break the stream also. Here's what I'm going to do. I've turned off auto stop on the stream. Uh, I'm going to rejoin the YouTube stream. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that. Um, I'm just going to try to kill my uh, Emacs session. So if all goes well, the stream, this same stream will be the one that we use. Uh, those of you on Twitch, I won't be able to stream back to switch, Twitch again. But uh, I'll, I'll rejoin and we'll figure out another way to do this. Maybe we'll do it in a VM if we can actually make that work. <laughs> Continue on mobile. Yeah, that's, that's not going to make any fun. Kind of de defeats the whole purpose. Okay, so I'm gonna try to, to break things right now and I'll rejoin the same stream. And if I don't, you'll see a notification for new stream. So let's let's see what happens now whenever I try to kill the the stream. Can you hear me now? <laughs> All right. Sorry about that, folks. Anyway, I was replying to Max, who said, it seems like you may have started uh, experimenting with Wayland compositors before the stream. No, that's why we're having this problem right now, because I did not experiment like I should have. I did a very bad thing, which is wait till the very last minute to get ready for the stream, and then I didn't try anything, and then now we see... Uh, the results of that. So this is a, a warning to all of you who want to try to do any kind of live streaming. You should be a little bit prepared. All right, systemcrafters.net, uh, content, live streams. Let's go back here. Okay, we're back to our notes. So we're gonna try running this in a VM to see what happens.
So uh, to any of you who are seeing the stream in a super low quality, hit the little wheel at the bottom of the video and go force it to be back at 1080p because YouTube tends to do that whenever uh, the stream stops and then restarts again for some, for some excuse me, for some reason they don't actually uh, help you out there. You have to do it yourself. All right, let's see if uh, this Ubuntu VM is gonna work today. We'll see what versions of software it has on it if we can try any of these things. Maybe we can actually try Wayfire. That'd be kind of nice, but um, I believe that without OpenGL, it may not work. Venetia says, is it pure GTK that enables Emacs to play nice in Wayland, or do we need the X translation layer on Wayland? Yeah, you do need the X translation layer, the uh, whatever it's called, X Wayland, which basically makes it possible to run X apps inside of uh, Wayland uh, compositors. Terminal. Let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, sudo apt install sway. All right, so it does have sway. No, it's all right. Okay, some optionals. Hey, Pavel, nice to see you. What version of sway is this? 1.4. So this is pretty old, and uh, of course, because this is uh, Ubuntu um, 20. So this may not be very indicative of the uh, modern Sway experience, but we're just gonna take a look at it nonetheless. If it runs, can I get a better resolution? Yeah, probably, hmm. Well, we're gonna experiment a little bit. We're gonna see what happens. 25, 60, okay, that's probably whatever it can be. So let's run it here. It's much safer to break uh, this screen. Okay, cool. Unable to start a DRM session, unable to connect, take control. So I think there's a way. So run sway in X session. Have I tried Manjaro sway? I have not. Let's see here. Blah, blah, blah. I don't think this is what I was looking for. Hmm. Thought there was a way to do this, but maybe it's only for others. Um, which one was it? Was it Cage Break? That said it could do that? Yeah, open a virtual output. See, this is what I expected it to do. Tomas says you, you just stop the default Ubuntu desktop environment and start sway from the virtual terminals. That's probably the ideal way to do it. Let me see, uh, can I just throw that in X session potentially? And let's see here, X session or, oops, X session. X init RC. X init. Okay, here we go. Mm, no, that's not what I was looking for. Thought I was in the sway page. Well, I guess that doesn't make any sense, does it? I need to be in the terminal. How do you do that in Ubuntu? So, uh, Ubuntu GNOME. Exit to console, yeah. Init three, oh, okay. Let's try that. So sudo init three, boom. So if I run uh, sway here, I think it should work. There we go. Okay, so that's nice. Um, now the question is, how do you... Okay, so do I have a way to run an application here? All right, so run application. Probably need something like, uh, oh, D menu, okay. And this is on the Arch Wiki, so I'm probably wrong. Super D, let go through. Uh, hmm. 
Probably not. Requires D menu. It probably did not get installed, which is going to be great. <laughs> um, and what was the? Let's see exit. Mod D. Yeah, it's not working. As it. Uh, if I do Shift Alt Q, I think it's going to kill this app for me because I switch back to the terminal control out of one. Super Enter. Oh, there we are. Thank you very much to uh, Xer. All right, so D sudo apt install D menu. We're going to get this going here. It's super tiny for you, I know. I want to try to fix that in a second. Okay, so it's already there. No, it's not working. Control Z B G to keep sway in the background. Ah, right. Okay, so I mean, from what you can see so far, it looks like i3 from whatever you can't see. Resolution. So change screen, uh, use a graphical display program W displays or the terminal program WLR render. So I probably need to install that, huh? WLR. All right, so sudo, well, just apt search render. I can't even read that myself. I don't think it's on here. WLR render. No. You know him settings, Damon? Hmm, good, good idea. W displays, probably not here either, I would say. Unbelievable, it is here. Okay. Pseudo apt install W displays. We're learning already. You can set the scale invert manager. It doesn't work for me like that. For some reason, um, I guess I have to full screen it for it to work. Okay, well, that's good enough, huh? W displays. Oof. What happened here? Uh, unknown. Extremely slow. I think the stream is choppy at the moment. I have no idea what that bar is. Let me get out of this uh, full screen. There we go. Let's do that because it's really killing me. So um, I have that. Hmm. Actually, that's a good point. Actually, let's let's see. Well, no, I bet money that's not going to work. So Spice VD Agent. I don't think it's going to help with uh, Wayland. Probably doesn't support that. Anyway, this is good enough for now. Oh, look at that. I think D menu is up there and it's really, really tiny. That's funny. So, uh, what can I say? Nautilus? Yeah, okay. So, D, D menu is working. The text is just really, really small. Okay, I'm hitting super Q to kill this program and it's not actually working. Okay, that works. So shift super Q. Okay, so um, DPI issue definitely. Hey Alejandro, yeah, we're we're trying sway at the moment. I killed the stream before while trying it, and uh, now we're doing it in a VM. Super shift Q, yeah, I got it. Okay, so um, W displays. Let's try that one more time. So what does this even mean? Okay. Description. Can I edit that? Can't edit that. Position, size. Oh, here it is. Okay. So drop down. Um, this is this is much better, but it doesn't scroll. So who knows? Let's do that. Don't rotate. Will you set the setting? Apply changes. I can't even see the apply changes button. Um, let's see. Apply changes. Is there a button I can click? Let's do this. Let's use my i3 knowledge. There we go. How about that? Right there. If 
Hey, much better. Okay. Let's get out of uh, resize mode. Okay, so the font is huge. Sorry, small. That's fine. Uh, at least we were able to change the resolution to something a bit more reasonable. I'm going to sh uh, sh shrink it down, let's say. There's something like 1600 by 900 and see if it's a bit better, more readable. Okay, that's fine. Cool, cool, cool. So at least we've got this up and running. Now, um, now that it's running and we can see it, we can talk about what Sway is sort of supposed to be. Sway is, is effectively a clone of the i3 tiling window manager for Waylon. And um, i3 was like the first tiling window manager that I really got excited about whenever I was looking into these things. How long has it been? 10, 15 years ago? Um, the reason why is because I felt like it gave me the level of control that I wanted for carving up screen real estate because uh, dynamic tiling window managers uh, that sort of you pick a defined layout and then it just sort of adds windows to that layout. I didn't like that as much. It didn't really make it as much sense to me as having more control like um, like i3 does. So this gives you that same experience where you can sort of move around with your keyboard between windows. I'm using super and the arrow keys here. I don't remember the, the key bindings for um, horizontal or vertical or what is it, split. There's a way to split things. There's also ways to like make tabs out of windows effectively, but it doesn't seem to be described here. I3 default key bindings. I'm pretty sure they're gonna be the same ones. I3 reference card. So horizontal. Okay, so super H. Super H. Uh, no, didn't do anything. Okay, so I think that it's got these things bound some other way. Oh, I think you have to um, open a window before it even splits it, right? So if I do super shift and super enter, come on. You're not going to create a terminal for me? There it goes, finally. All right, and then what's super V? Yeah, now uh, super enter, then it creates a, a window here. Okay. Thomas says, where is your super key physically? On the Windows key between Control and Alt? Yes, it's there. So as you can see, we've got sort of a, a small tiling layout here. You can move windows around between them effectively if you want to, which is kind of nice. Um, and you can't really tell that it's Wayland involved here because everything is sort of, you know, plain as it is. But you can see there's a little bit of a, you know, rendering issue here with the W displays at the top. Uh, the window sort of renders over the title a little bit. I don't know, you know, what to blame that on, but... You know, any uh, windowing system is going to have these kinds of little, you know, fit and finish issues. Even EXWM has plenty of them. So, what can I say? Close that program. GNOME term is laggy AF. Yeah, and I can see the stream is kind of lagging a little bit, probably because of the full screen uh, setup here. Let me actually get this out of full screen. Come on, come on, come on. Give me the box. Where's the box? I'm waiting for the little pop up that gets me out of here. There we go. Wow. Okay, so it's tiny again, which is great. Interesting. So uh, what was it? W displays. Let me move this to something bigger. Cancel. Come on now. There we go. I can scale that up some. There we go. Uh, this one, maybe. Text is still tiny. Let's see how Emacs looks like under Wayland. That's a great idea, actually. So I think I have Emacs installed here. I don't know what uh, configuration is on it. Um, let's see here. I'll run D menu, which is completely illegible at this uh, configuration. Don't ask me why. Emacs, if it runs, may have to start it from a terminal. Let's see. Emacs. Oh, I don't have it installed. I don't use this VM, as you can see, because Emacs would be installed otherwise. Emacs. All right. 
Let's do that. PGTK, we don't have time to compile Emacs right now, unfortunately. Okay, so we've seen Sway by this point. Uh, might be worth trying some of the other window managers we mentioned just to try it. Alejandro says, does Emacs have to be compiled with PG PGTK? No, it doesn't have to be, so long as the Wayland compositor that you use um, is capable of running X applications. There's a specific protocol that has to be used for that. Uh, and your, your compositor has to support it. I believe that some of them don't support it. Make J8. Yeah, still, I think it's not going to be... It's going to kill the stream if I do that, I think. When I, when I say it's kill the stream, in this case, I mean it's going to be so slow that it's going to be unbearable to watch. What are we installing? I guess it pulls in a bunch of crap. All right, taking forever here. There we go. So now Emacs, come on. Q tile doesn't support it. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Okay, so we got Emacs here. Um, I can move over to this window. Maybe I should still try to make it bigger. Oh, I could do DPI scale. Cool. Two. Can I just make this bigger so I can hit apply? Hey, that's great. Okay, that's a bit better. Now I still need to make it legible. I'm just gonna squeeze the crap out of these other windows, make them go away. Here, Emacs, take a break. Oh, what happened? Come on. Thank you. All right, let's make this bigger. Super, super slow. I think it's just the rendering is making it really slow. How about that one? Can we do that? That's better. Okay, we can live with that. Let me close this window. It's really slow. Emacs. Did it work? Something's wrong. There it goes. Okay. Close the terminal. So there we have it. We've we've run Sway. It works pretty well. But uh, right now, I think my VM is just choking on it for some reason. I don't know if it's, if it's the uh, DPI scaling. Yeah, because every every now and then I can't see the cursor anymore. Running um, a Wayland compositor in a VM is not really what you should be doing anyway, because it's better if you have uh, hardware accelerated graphics. And I don't have that in this VM because I had trouble with that in the last stream we tried to use it. Okay, so now it seems to be working. All right, so that's good on that one. Uh, let's pull up. Jeez. In fact, maybe if I can bail out of uh, Sway. Let's see, how do you exit? Exit. Exit I3 is uh, mod shift E, so it's probably the same thing here. So mod shift E. Are you going to die? We're waiting. If I could type, it would be helpful, too. Would full screen... Oh, there we are. Really laggy. Uh, would full screen work for the VM? Um, it. I had a, an issue with it a moment ago, I think. It, maybe it was a performance issue. I can't remember what it was. There we are. Okay, next. Uh, what did I want to try? Um, DWL, which is basically the port of DWM to Wayland. So maybe it has it here. Sudo apt install DWL. I know you can't read this right now. Nope, not on here. Uh, what else? We obviously we could try a Q tile. Um, cage break is cage, cage break on here. Sudo apt install cage break. That's something we might be able to try in uh, in my real X session. But as we saw before, that's kind of risky. Uh, okay, sudo apt install qtile. Let's see if qtile works. No, no qtile? All right. I don't think it's worth trying to upgrade Ubuntu at this point to make it work. So uh, run qtile in X. Let me see if it's possible to do that. Oh, really? You can use it as both? Wow. That's kind of impressive but it seems like it's in development, maybe not fully working yet. A lot of things are uh, said to be supported. Hmm. 
Hmm. X11. Hmm. Maybe this one isn't. It's not possible. Venetia says, uh, I'm upgrading Ubuntu right now. I'm kind of scared of something going wrong. It's always possible. That's why it's nice to use something like Geeks, but, you know, Geeks has its own challenges. I haven't actually upgraded my Geeks machines in a while now. Probably two, three months. I don't know how long it's been. That's a nice thing, though, is you don't have to upgrade it. You can just leave it running in a stable, uh, predictable way. Uh, no documentation here for what I want to do. I know it says that, um, what was the other one I was looking at? Cage break. Let's see about DWL, uh, DWL Wayland. Can I run this in X? If I run it in X, will I regret it? Um... You can run it as a separate window inside either an X11 or X Wayland session. Okay. So in theory, it will work. In practice, it may cause a problem, but we're gonna find out. Let's see, um, Geeks, did I already install this? Install DWL. Let's see what happens. This one's gonna be less interesting, I think. What is time shift, Pablo? System restore, okay. I haven't heard of that before. Okay, so uh, DWL help. H, man DWL. Oh, okay, so this is suck less, so you don't get help. So uh, I'm gonna try this again, and if we have pro problems, then um, I'll just bring the stream back up. Let's see, let's see what happens. Oh, once again, black screen. Yeah, I think it's the same problem. I don't know what the deal is with this. Let me see. Cannot connect the socket, seat D. You know what? Is there something that needs to be running? Cannot take device, device or resource busy, fail to open device, DRI card zero. Okay, so it's actually trying to, to access the uh, uh, the graphics card. Interesting. So from what I understand with uh, WL Roots, it's supposed to be smart enough to figure out that you're running an X session and then run it as a virtual desktop instead of um, uh, trying to grab access to the graphics card. And Tomas says, you can't have the graphics card controlled by both x and Wayland. Yeah, you can't. Um, and it's supposed to be able to figure that out on its own. WL Roots has some automatic backend checking stuff. I thought it would work here, but apparently it doesn't. So I don't know if there's something specific to the Geek setup that makes it not work correctly. Uh, the fact that it's telling me it couldn't connect to sockets for like seat D, et cetera, maybe that's a problem, but... Um, yeah, not sure. So let's see, uh, maybe I will have to kill it one more time, but we, we do know that the stream will stay up. So if uh, it starts spinning, the little icon starts spinning, then just wait for a few minutes, so it'll come back. I'm not sure exactly how we can try these though if I can't install them. So we may have to get creative. So let me just try to get this reset and then we'll be back to it again. Waiting to see if the stream's back up on the screen. There we go. Jeez. Well, it happened again. So what can I do about that, huh? Eventually it's back. That's right. Okay. So um, let's see. How can we accomplish what we're trying to do here without killing the stream for a third time? 
Let me check uh, good old Firefox. So WL Roots. The people who are watching the recording of this, if anybody watches the recording, they're going to be wondering what's going on whenever the video just cuts to me being confused again. Uh, let's see. Back end. I wonder if there's like an environment variable I can use to uh, force a particular back backend. I think I should be able to. Oh, WLR backends. X11. Okay. So it's possible that this can work. It's also possible this could fail. So let's see what happens here. I'm pretty sure that uh, this used WL roots. So it should pick up the alternate backend, but. Um, <clears throat> As we've seen, it might not. So let me just give it a try. WLR, what was it? WLR backends equals X11. Uh, DWL, we're gonna find out real fast if this is a bad idea or not. Hey, at least it didn't crash. All right, unrecognized backend X11, X11 failed to start backend. All right, so. Um, WL roots, unrecognized backend. Mm, unrecognized, no, it didn't actually work. Display in VAR. Interesting. Echo display. Ah, okay. Display is set. Okay. Maybe WL Roots is actually not compiled with it. In Geeks. That would actually explain it. All right, WL roots. We're gonna find out just by looking at the uh, the Geeks package. Okay, so um, I don't see anything special being added here. So if it's not there by default, did I compile with X Wayland? Uh, it appears so. X Wayland is a different thing. I don't think that it's gonna be the solution to this problem. X org server X Wayland. I could be wrong though. Thirty three in the variable. Ah, I don't think so. What did I do there? Uh, v term. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, it's not going to work. I think that uh, WL roots may have been compiled without that back end. Uh, X11. If you choose to enable X11 support, X Wayland lib XCB. I see. Optional at runtime. So lib XCB, I don't see that in this package. Um, yeah, lib XCB is not here. So it, it tells me that there's no. Um, hmm. X work back in. So apparently uh, we can't actually try the others because they're not in Ubuntu. I mean, unless I go upgrade Ubuntu or install a new Ubuntu VM. I mean, how long is that going to take? To download the image and then install it? I don't think I have one already. I think it's just 20. Cool. Well, uh, I think that uh, we can't actually accomplish the final goal, which is to try these other window managers, unfortunately. Um, Because I didn't see any other ones in installed or available in Geeks, and we didn't see any of the others in uh, Ubuntu either, e e even Wayfire. So I don't th think we can do it.
try a Manjaro suede. I mean, what is Manjaro suede? Do you have to install Manjaro? I kind of feel like it's uh, not accessible. Manjaro suede edition. We're building a Manjaro suede edition. What's the difference? Okay, it's got more stuff in the in the bar. Gaps. Is that Rofi? So it's just a configuration, basically. Live boot it? Yeah. I don't know. Sure, I mean, you could live boot it, but I don't know how interested I am to try to do that right at the moment. Um. Okay. Well, since we can't do that, I'm trying to think of what else we can do instead, because obviously uh, we can't try the other ones we wanted to try because WL Roots in Geeks is not built with the X11 backend, which is unfortunate. It's actually good for me to figure this out. Uh, Venetia says, I'm aware this GNU Geeks is too organized to my taste. Yeah. So uh, I will have to actually, if I'm going to be experimenting with Wayland or in WL Roots, uh, for my own purposes, I'm going to have to rebuild WL Roots to have X11 support because it doesn't seem to be in there by default, especially if you don't have libxeb as part of the package definition. So that's that's a minor thing to update the package def and uh, make it work. It just doesn't work right now. And also, I don't know how easy it's going to be to even try to recompile it here on stream to make it work. I mean, it's always possible, but I mean... It could take the rest of the remaining time and we wouldn't have time to look at anything else, so it's kind of pointless. Uh, Alejandro asked a question, would it be possible to create EWWM as a port of EXWM for Wayland with PGTK? Um, I wonder what access you have to the pixel sizes of Windows and Emacs with the PGTK port. Like You would need to have that because I think that's what is being used for EXWM. Whenever you have a particular window open in Emacs, when I say window, I mean one of these buffer windows. I believe there's a way to get the pixel size of the window. Uh, window size. Let's see, where is it? It's not that. There is a variable for this, and I can't remember what it is. Or a function. Window size. Um... Is there a pixel, pixel size, min pixel size, um, window pixel before size change. Yeah, there's something about old pixel height. Is there just a window pixel height? Pixel height. Okay, window, window pixel height. And, um, I'll do that with the current window. So window pixel height current window. Okay, current window is not valid. Current window. Buffer window. I don't remember a oh, window buffer. No, that's not right. Set window buffer. Anybody know the function or variable to get the current window? Because obviously I can't remember it. Or is it just current window variable? Nope. Selected window. Thank you, Pavel. Selected window. Uh, this must be a function. There we go. All right. So uh, window pixel height, selected window. There we go. 766. So it's basically saying that this window here is 70, 766 pixels tall. So for you to do a EWWM with Wayland, you would need to have this window pixel height function implemented correctly in the PGDA build. And then you would obviously have to write a Wayland compositor that would make Emacs be the sort of forefront of the whole experience. And then um, basically fill in the uh, windows for Emacs with an actual Wayland client window. I think it's possible. I mean, it's basically the same concept as you, as you would do with EXWM. It's just a matter of uh, porting the code over, which could be challenging depending on how well factored the code is. I'm pretty sure that, you know, the the XCB and um, EXWM logic are probably pretty intertwined, so you would have to either rewrite it or sort of factor it out so you could have the same base implementation for both. Um, at this point, 
while EXWM is what I'm using all the time, there are certain things that make it less than ideal for me, um, especially as I'm doing more game development and the fact that when I create a window to display an OpenGL context, it never is the exact size that I ask for. It's always bigger by a meaningful size and it's not the right dimensions either. So because there's issues like that, I mean, maybe that's something that could be fixed in EXWM. I don't really know, but, but just because of that alone, I'm starting to get a little bit um, annoyed is the wrong word, but I'm, I'm starting to lose hope that EXWM is the right experience for what I need to do. Plus, you know, we've seen many times in the past EXWM does something weird and then it crashes the stream. Now today I did it myself plenty of times just with, uh, you know, running things I should be running. But if I were to do something myself, I probably would not do an Emacs based window manager, but I would do a window manager that integrates very easily with Emacs so that it doesn't depend on Emacs operating correctly for it to work. So you could have like a direct line into it from Emacs where Emacs could be sending it things or maybe you could facilitate um, smooth key binding transitions between the two. Um, but maybe it would not be the primary window management process. Of course, if you were to write a Wayland compositor for an EWWM, it would be a separate process already because it has to be a program it wouldn't be Emacs, the Emacs program. So it would have, it would be a secondary program that would launch and then it would launch Emacs and then communicate with it. So maybe it would be possible to do this to where maybe it could restart Emacs if everything goes wrong. It's, uh, it's an interesting idea to try it one day and see, you know, what the minimum of code would be necessary to make it work. Xmonad, what about Xmonad? But yeah, it is possible to do an EWWM, I think. Uh, you would just need, you would probably need that uh, PGTK build of Emacs to make it work though, because you, well, yeah, it would probably be better if you had PGTK build of Emacs. If you had an X Wayland support built into your Wayland compositor that you're using for this purpose, then you could run the X version of Emacs, but I don't know if there would be any kind of flakiness with it that would cause problems for the user experience. So anyway, yeah, um, it's interesting to think about, you know, how Wayland or Wayland compositors could be useful for system crafting, you know, for having a more modern, maybe not the right word, but a more mm, polished experience potentially with you know hardware acceleration of everything and you know having you know better control over how everything works it could be interesting but you would definitely need a window manager that enables you to do that obviously you know any kind of tiling window manager could be used for you know a crafted system because they often have command line applications that you can use to control the windows um, or uh, ipc protocols but um yeah, to have something to the level of Emac, sorry, EXWM, it would take, you know, some work on a separate project for that. But I am thinking of something different entirely uh, that I would like to do. So we'll see if I ever get around to doing that because I've already got too many projects going on at the same time. Uh, so much so that I don't have any time to make System Crafters videos these days. So uh, I think I need to scale back a little bit as opposed to jumping too far ahead. But it could be a, an interesting video series to try to implement that. Right, nice to see you. Okay, so um, I'm trying to think if there's, if there's anything else not necessarily related to Wayland to talk about in the last 10 minutes of stream here. Um, we could probably try to go through the Emacs 28.1 uh, release notes, potentially. I know that Mickey has this post, but this may be old, actually. Is it not old? There's no uh, date on the post, but since it says 28.1, I would assume it means it's um, recent. GK Pseudo says, I don't think Haskell would be the right direction for a window manager to integrate with Emacs. I mean, it's not gonna be easily hackable by people who 
uh, or Emacs enthusiasts. I think that you would need to have a Lisp be the way to hack it for sure. Uh, let's go to Emacs uh, News 28.1. Don't they have files like that? Yeah, like that. Very readable, I have to say. Let me select all on this and copy it. Put it into an actual buffer. Scratch. Paste. So anything cool here? Installation changes, I don't really care. Um, okay, well, we do have the with native compilation option, which is not on by default, as we talked about many times before in Emacs 28.1, but probably in Emacs 29, it will be on by default because they will have had time to stabilize it by then. Cairo graphics library is now used by default at present, which probably just means better rendering of images and other glyphs and stuff. FTX font backend driver has been removed. Yeah, they've been using Harf Buzz for a while, so probably don't, don't need stuff like that anymore. Control H N and Emacs. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Uh Wow, I actually do have it built in already, it seems. In 28.1. Interesting. Uh, Alejandro says, could Qtile be able to communicate with Emacs via a Python REPL? Yeah, definitely possible. Um, probably would work okay. Because you'd be able to send, you know, Python expressions to it to interactively do things. However, you could basically do the same thing with any other window manager that has a command line interface that can then send messages to pipe like i3 message or sway message etc because you can just have emacs call out to that process to send a message now spawning a new process is not necessarily the fastest way to uh, interact with a window manager and it may you know drag things down here and there but it's possible to do integrations with many window managers but uh with with emacs but to have one that is smoothly integrated to where, you know, key bindings seem to work fluidly between them and that kind of thing, I think there may, be, may need to be other work involved. I know that Pavel spent a lot of work on getting i3 to uh, work smoothly with uh, with Emacs, and then eventually I think Pavel switched to EX, EXWM. If Pavel's still here, you can uh, confirm whether he's still on EXWM. Let's see. Splitting without double buffering support. Interesting. Yeah, this is definitely a better uh, readout than what we were looking at before because it's highlighting the, the uh, salient points. Unicode standard version 14. Improved support for emoji. Yeah, that was, you know, pretty good. Pretty good improvement. Completion on Meta X shows key bindings for commands. That's cool that it's, it's in there by default now. There's a suggest key bindings variable. We may have talked about that before. I feel like I remember that. Completion format, new value one column. Okay. So uh, yeah, that's if you use the default completion system, I think that it has like a grid of completion options. I think this will just make it one column. Maybe it makes it more similar to uh, the more modern completion interfaces like, you know, Vertico, etc. Maybe it's being used for uh, MCT. I don't know. Key map for buffer actions. Control XX holds keystrokes for various buffer oriented commands. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know about that one actually. So, uh, Control HK. Control X X. Nah, that's a key prefix. Um, what was it? Oh, Control X X. Control H. There we go. Truncate lines. Insert buffer. Clone buffer. Revert buffer. Okay, cool. Zier says, "I found the weirdest thing recently where key binding suggestions would make a command lag." Hmm, I haven't seen that.
Wow, okay, that's kind of interesting. Uh, modifiers now go outside angle brackets in pretty printed key bindings. That's that's kind of a departure from what we've seen in the past because usually when you see a uh, printed key binding in Emacs, it is in this format. I don't know why they decided to change that. Either variant could be used as input. Um, and they, okay, so even as, a, as an input, you can use it. So keyboard, CM dash return. Maybe that makes sense actually, because it's supposed to be a uh, special key. There we go. So uh, C M A. Yeah. Okay. So maybe it's just for things like that, like return or tab, etc. Okay. Yep. Alejandro says, "What is the model for Wayland? Is it a server or a library? It's basically the um, the window manager." i.e. the compositor program has to pull in a library to implement all the functionality for a server. It doesn't have to pull in a library. If you are a masochist, you could implement all of it yourself in the code. Um, but the, the compositor program is supposed to take care of all the uh, responsibilities of what the X server used to do um, in the old model. So yeah, the, the compositor, which is also the window manager, is, is basically the server. It is the server. Hmm. Eval last S expression now handles def var, def custom, def face specially. We pre previously not defined values defined by these forms, but this command has now been changed. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, this is actually something that I learned last year that if you have def var in your Emacs Lisp code, if you Previously, we're using control X, control E to eval that form. It will not replace the value with whatever value you've got in the actual def var form. Um, it would only work if you use control alt X to reevaluate that form. Now, apparently they've changed eval last X, X expression so that it does the right thing um, that you expect it to when using eval last S expression. I think it's definitely a good change. It, uh, it's more consistent with what the user would expect. New user option, use short answers. I think we've seen that one recently. Kill buffer, delete autosave files. Uh, killing a buffer that has an autosave file will prompt the user to whether the autosave file should be deleted. Delete autosave files if non-nil was previously documented, blah, 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 blah. That's kind of nice. Actually, I would probably use that because I hate those autosave files. And they, they tend to stick around when you don't want them to. Next error message highlight. Copy directory create symlink. Copy the link instead of following the link. Uh, okay, that could be useful. I wonder how long this is. Remove hook is not an interactive command. Oh, that's cool. So you can call remove hook and it will give you a list of all the hooks. So let's say like after init hook. If you run that, oh, I like that because I used to have to eval expressions myself to remove things. So yeah, remove hook. Now you can easily do it. Like I could take this table, make cell map. I have no idea what that is. So I'll just remove that. Remove hook after init hook. Now it's gone. Super useful. I like that one. That's the thing about Emacs is that, um, in every release, there's a possibility that things will be improved in a way that you don't expect and you wouldn't really even know it until you read the news file. So I, I wouldn't have known that remo remove hook had been improved that way because I've gotten used to the old approach of having to go and manually edit the list and reevaluate it. Uh, Jeff says it's only about 4,000 lines. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, 4,000. Is, is this only for 28? Good God, man. Okay, well that's, you know, it's a pretty good update if it's uh, 4,000 lines to tell you all the things that have changed. People who say Emacs is dead, they need to read, read the news file, I think. Let me see if I can get back to where we were before. Okay, here we are. Frames. Clone frame, frame title format. Um, Windows. Hmm. 
Mini buffer scrolling is now conservative by default. Tab bars and tab lines. Anything new here? Max says, since 28.1 uh, upgrade, I noticed a startup time increased. That's interesting. I wonder why it would have increased for you. Does it increase with just, you know, plain Emacs-Q with no packages installed? New command, toggle frame tab bar. It enabled disable the tab bar on the currently selected frame, regardless of uh, the values of tab bar mode, tab bar show. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of useful, actually. Frame specific appearance of the tab bar when tab bar show is a number. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I like that uh, possibility. That was a problem I had with tab bar mode in the past in Emacs 27, where you, could, you couldn't actually say for a particular frame, don't show the tab bar. Yeah, increase against my current config. Probably some package is not playing well with Emacs 28. Anyway, there's a lot of good stuff that happened in the Emacs 28 release if you haven't actually looked at it or tried it yet. Um, if you haven't tried Emacs 28 yet, definitely do it because there's a lot of you know useful improvements, but you should probably read through this file and see if there's anything related to the things that you already use and know about in Emacs to make sure that you are up on all the stuff because I've already seen like two things here I didn't know about. Uh, so. Pretty useful to read this file, uh, but definitely try Emacs 28 because it's stable now and uh, has a lot of stuff that you'll want to try out. Plus, if you want to try the new uh, native compilation functionality, which makes Emacs Lisp a lot faster, or at least, you know, it feels a lot faster. I don't know for sure in all cases if it is, you know, always faster, but it feels faster for sure. So definitely you can try that out, but you have to compile Emacs with the with native compilation flag, as it says here at the very top of the news file. Um, but it's worth it, I think, for most users. Uh, Alejandro says, rational mode line, do we have time for a short intro? Uh, well, this shows how much I've been tuned in lately to things. I didn't know there was a rational mode line, but I will probably look at that next time because I know that, um, that Jeff and, um, man, I'm blanking right now. John have both been, you know, helping a lot with maintaining, uh, rational Emacs. So, uh, we will... Take a look at that probably well not next week because i won't be here next week but the week after i think we should take a look at rational emacs again to see what the current status is uh because there's been a lot of work happening on it a lot of prs being merged a lot of discussions happening so thank you both to uh to jeff and to john uh jeff bowen and john eastman for uh shepherding that along uh in recent days while i've been sort of off focusing on other things but i will be back on that project myself uh very soon uh, GK Suda says, with native comp, I needed to recompile GCC with JIT. Um, yeah, well, you'll, you will need the lib GCC JIT library, and you might need a newer version of it, which is, uh, I think, maybe 10 is the appropriate one for that. Yeah. When you compile... Uh, ah, okay. I understand what you're saying. Uh, GK Suda says, it took about three hours. Yes, it takes a long time to compile GC, lib GCC, lib GCC JIT, because you're effectively compiling GCC just as a library. Uh, Alejandro said, uh, it doesn't exist. Um, could we have an intro to mode line? That's something I want to do in the, the new like Emacs from Scratch 2 series. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, John says, feel free to open an issue on Rational Emacs if you have questions. Yes, definitely. Okay, so I think that's all the time I have for today. Um, <laughs> I apologize for all of the mishaps with the stream where we had to stop it multiple times, but thankfully it's all one video, all one stream. So uh, it's not going to drive people crazy to see this uh, in the recording. Um, so like I said, next week I will be out, but then the week after we might take a look at uh, Rational Emacs, <clears throat> excuse me, another time. And then we will be getting back into System Crafters videos very soon it's just you know i've been busy trying to buy a house trying to get my car legal in this country all kinds of crazy stuff behind the scenes so it's been a little bit difficult recently to get back to videos but it will happen so anyway thanks everybody for being here today i really hope that uh, you got something out of the stream as uh, mishapful as it was but um until next time have a great weekend and happy hacking we'll see you